now we're going to talk about uh, this guy who's in front of me. The, the guy seems like a genius. I love him already because he's a medicinal cook. For every illness and ailment you can think of, there's a corresponding potion or pill. But if you want to go au naturel, uh, their Mother Nature's medicine cabinet can't be beat. And with a little bit of culinary creativity, she tastes much better too. We're joined live in the studio by the UK's only medicinal cook, Dale Pinnock. Hello, Dale. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Fantastic, thank you. Thanks for being here. You've been here for ages. <laughs> I've been here a while, a couple Since of hours. Since ten past yeah, four. Yeah. Well, you know, I like to make sure I know where I'm going. What have you seen outside? Has there been any action in the green room? I've seen lots of people walking backwards and forwards, yeah. Did you see Steve Wright? I did. Did he Did he sort of cock you a hoop? He did. Yeah, he's very nice. Man, isn't he? <laughs> now listen, you are qualified. Take people through your qualifications. Yeah, well, um, basically I've... Uh, degree trained medical herbalist and I'm a nutritionist as well so I work in um, clinical practice yes and also work for about six years as a whole food chef and now I just kind of amalgamate them all together well you've brought some soup in we'll get onto that in a moment or mm -hmm. two it smells terrific so are, are your foods are they preventative or are they can they be used as treatment mid ailment well it's a bit of both really I mean this thing I've brought in for you is something that can really zap a cold quite quickly so essentially it's you know just creating therapeutic dishes that are based on the actual pharmacological activity of some of the ingredients. Uh, now let me ask you, you know, if, we, if we're suffering from bloating, what would you prepare for us there? What can help us with bloating? One of the best things for bloating, um, really just a simple tea actually of um, chamomile, peppermint and fennel. All Those right. things, three things together are fantastic. I've got ridiculously high life-threatening cholesterol, I'm not joking. I thought, I thought okay. to the person who told me was and then mm. they weren't. <laughs> what do I eat for that? One of the best things for that is probably things like oats, because they've actually got quite a lot of soluble fibre in. Right. So that can actually help to bind to some of the cholesterol and carry it out via the bowel. And you, what you do, you create dishes around this, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what about blood pressure? High blood pressure, it depends what the cause is. There's several different factors with that. It depends whether it's a problem with the kidneys or with the blood vessels or with the heart. So that would depend. But one of my favourite things is actually making a preserve from hawthorn berries. That's nice. Hawthorn berries are fantastic. They actually help to relax the blood vessel walls a little bit, so that can take now, things Now, how long have you been at this? Because you are, you've carved out a real niche mm, for yourself. You, mm. The UK's only medicinal cook. How long have you been doing it? I've, well, in total, I've actually been studying it for around about 12 years or so. I mean, I've been graduated um, about four years, so I've been in the position to actually give some scientific clout to it for about four years. Oh, yeah. tell us about the clout. What clout have you included? Scientific clout. Well, you know, just actually telling people how these things are doing what they do. Because, you know, we often see little bits of information, you know, that says, oh, ginger's good for you. But why? Yeah, you know, yeah. What's in there? Mm -hmm. what, what makes it so good? So what I'm trying to do with um, a lot of these dishes that I'm creating is not only telling people that it's good for a certain condition, but telling them why. Educated. You contacted us. Uh, do you have a book out, a cookbook? People would love these recipes. Um, yeah, that's something I'm working on. You also, don't have one out yet? Also DVDs and things like you, that. You no. should have your own TV show. Has, has people been knocking on your door? We're working on that as well, yeah. Everybody we would watch this show. This we're is hounding people. Because so, everybody loves the food, but most of it, you know, how we like it, how I like it particularly, is bad for you. Yeah. So, but this is food which we all love. You know, basically, mm -hmm. I think life is what we do in between eating meals. You yes, know, for those absolutely. foodies, uh, as, uh, the, and the, that's the majority of the people. But you're you're saying, well, eat this. It's gorgeous. It's fun to make. It's great. It saves you money, and it's going to make you not, exactly. not 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 keep keep as you are, but make you better. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's often been this view that health food is like you know a flimsy piece of lettuce and a little bit of muesli. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that it can be decadent. It can be amazing, delicious and just really, really change your life. And it doesn't all have to lead to Bob Arigmi. No, not at all. The rumbling of the, the intestines. Rumbling. Yes, indeed. Garlic, you say, is amazing, but you have it raw, don't have it cooked. Garlic's fantastic. Garlic contains these, like, sulfurous essential oils. These are the bit that actually give it its smell. Yeah. Now, these are removed from the body via the breath. So as those essential oils move through your lungs, they can actually help to kill viruses. But you must have it raw, you say? You must have it raw, yeah, because you need... or in a com like a um, basically a form that has those compounds intact because you might see capsules on the supermarket shelf that says odorless it's not going to have that activity if people want to cook it healthily to smell. Uh, more than healthily you know mm. this, as mm. I say this gets you better not just maintains your health uh, can they go to your website absolutely yeah it's um, just www.dalepinnock.com it's d-a-l-e-p-i-n-n-o-c-k.com right there's lots of sniffles around at the moment there's lots of sniffles get onto the sniffle soup you brought some in here sniffle soup right now I had one little fingertip of this before and it was you could tell it was good for you it's got some welly hasn't it I'm going to have a spoonful now what's in this right well obviously we mentioned garlic that's one of the most important ingredients in here mm -hmm. um there's ginger ginger's a really really good anti-inflammatory yeah certainly 
when we get a cold, you get inflammation um, within the mucous membranes that line the nose and the and the sinuses. That's what some of the bunged up feeling is. Right. And the ginger helps to take down the swelling there, so it helps to soothe that. Yes. Um, also, shiitake mushroom in there. Oh, oh, yes, we love shiitake. Shiitake mushroom actually has been shown to give the white blood cells of the immune system a bit of a kick. Mm-hmm. And another ingredient here is goji berries. Goji berries? Goji berries. Go with the goji berries, son. <laughs> now, these are things that have had huge amounts of media attention over the last couple of years. And again, these are really, really good for supporting the immune system, help to increase white blood cell count a little bit. May I taste it? Go for it. Oh, Let's know what you think. Here we go. And I'll always be honest. You know I'm always honest. Wow! <laughs> Come on! It's not dissimilar to a very robust Bloody Mary. <laughs> it's blooming gorgeous. Thank you Fantastic. so much for being here. Yeah, that's it's great. An absolute pleasure. Chris. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks very much.